Did he come in the room? I just wanted to see him. I can text him as well. All right, I'd like to call to order the regular meeting of the Cordova Recreation Park District Board of Directors for Wednesday, February 20th, 2019. Thank you, Chair Yearwood. To lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance this evening, I'd like to welcome to the podium our special guest, Ann Taylor. You can just start, ready? Please join me in the pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, individual, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you, Ian. <laughs> Hello, everybody. I think I know most of you, but I'm Heather, Recreation Supervisor at the Senior Center. And um, so Ann Taylor, uh, just want to let you know a little bit about her. She's been coming to the Senior Center for many years. Um, she started off just in our knitting group, and then now she's an avid, uh, she does uh, hand and foot every Thursday, and her daughters bring her. <laughs> um, so they come to that, And but most importantly, Ann loves our polar bear plunge. She's been jumping for five years, and uh, she's raised lots of funds for us for the senior advisory board and then this year for the campfire victim. So we really appreciate Anne and her spirit and can't wait for to jump next year. You gonna re ready to jump for next year, yeah? And we'll go with you, Heather. <laughs> <laughs> Somehow I've gotten out of it, but. <laughs> Thank you. Thank but um, you. We, we really just appreciate Anne and her support, not just for the senior center, but for the community, so. Thank you. All right. All right, thanks. Thank you. All right. Roll call. Thank you. Thank you. Welcome. Director Reyes? Here. Director Leinbach? Here. Secretary Sloan? Here. Vice Chair Danzel? Here. And Chair Yearwood? Here. All right. Uh, board disclosures on action items. Anybody have anything they want to disclose? All right, seeing none, we'll move on to comments by the public. Thank you, Chair Yearwood. Members of the public may address the board on district topics not listed on this agenda. Speakers are limited to three minutes. It is a violation of state law for the board to discuss or take action on non-agenda items. <coughs> board members may only briefly ask clarifying questions or refer the matter to staff. And I do not have any speaker cards. All right, I guess we'll move on to the consent calendar. Thank you. The consent calendar items are considered administratively routine and will be acted upon in one motion unless separate action on a specific item is necessary. The chairperson will consider any request for discussion on the items prior to approval of the consent calendar. This evening we have five items for your consideration. Item C1 is to approve the minutes of the regular meeting of the Board of Directors on January 16, 2019. Item C2 is the district financial report for January 2019. Item C3 is the quarterly claims report, October through December 2018. Item C4 is to adopt resolution 18-19-34, accepting the notice of completion for the Mather Sports Center lighting improvements. And item C5 is to approve the release of requests for proposals for the graphic design, printing, and mailing of the recreation guide. All right, any discussion on any of the consent calendar items? All right, all right, C. Yes. I move that we accept the consent calendar C1, C2, C3, C4, and C5. All right. I have a motion by Director Reyes. A second? I'll second that. All right. Seconded by Director Leinbach. Roll call vote. Director Reyes? Aye. Director Leinbach? Aye. Secretary Sloan? Aye. Vice Chair Danzel? Aye. And Chair Yearwood? Aye. <clears throat> Excuse me. 
<clears throat> All right. Uh, I guess we'll move on to presentations. Thank you. Item D1 is a presentation of the 2018-19 mid-year budget review. And I'll turn it over to finance manager Matt Goodell. A little bit of prepping here. Good evening, Finance Manager Matt Goodell, Chair Yearwood, Vice Chair Danzel, Board Members. So it's that time of year again to take a look at our mid-year. And it's important to take a look to see if we're still on track for our vision that we proved back on August 15th, if we are hitting that target. And if we're not hitting that target, what can we do to get back on track? All right, so we do have some budget amendments, not many uh, this evening, just a few. And you could probably guess out of the gate which one we have uh, first. And that's water, yeah, shocker. Water utility cost. And after doing some analytics on our past historic spending, what we've done, the requested amount that we came up with is $125,000. Now, it doesn't sound like a lot of money extra that we need especially since we've spent $700,000 to date and we have a budget of $700,000. But that doesn't mean we're gonna spend $1.4 million this year, we've doubled that amount. And the reason why is we took a look at the last three years and the first six months from July to December, we spend 82% of that water allotment, okay? So that only means we spend 18% the remainder of the year from January to June. And so that equates to about $125,000 that we need extra to make it to the end of the year, okay? Uh, to offset that, we're going to utilize general fund tax revenues. And the reason for that is the housing market's been fantastic. Uh, new growth, new homes means more for uh, tax property revenue. Uh, the existing home sales and the existing areas have been great. And uh, I'm a stingy finance manager, and that means that I'm pretty conservative when it comes to budgeting the revenues. And so there was a natural gap to begin with. And so there's room for flexibility. And we decided on general fund revenue to be the safety blanket to be used for the uh, water cost. Um, the good news is, if there's good news, is that if you break it up by area, it's actually not that bad. I mean, we have PMID, we have Sunridge, we have Mather, we have Villages and Zinfandel. And so when you break it up by that, there's, there's a little bit of water additional cost in each of those areas. And so there's a chance that park services might be able to absorb that cost within their existing budget, shift some things around. But if not, we're gonna utilize general fund to support that extra cost, okay? So that's our goal. And a fun fact, uh, since we have a new park, Heron Landing, uh, we brought on a year ago, uh, looking at it, we thought, wow, this park doesn't cost that much in water costs. And we got it last December. Well, that's because it was during that 18%. And so it wasn't really costing that much water. We should have realized that. Uh, but it's a 20 acre park, heavily turfed. It has a water feature splash pad and those are not cheap when it comes to water cost. And so that is driving um, the reason why, one of the reasons why we have additional water cost this year. So we'll, we'll plan that for next year. The second item that we're bringing to you is that uh, our human resources department and uh, manager Andrea White has been very busy in the recruiting uh, for the same position, a few advertising that she's had to done over and over. And so with that, we ha she has to increase that budget. And so we decided to use our vacant positions and the salaries to offset that, that we're recruiting for. It doesn't sound like a whole lot, $2,000, why we bring that as a budget amendment. And the reason why is because we're drawing from the tens block, the labor block, and spending it on the 20s service and supply. So whenever we do a category shift, uh, we have to get board approval for that, okay? And so that's why we're bringing that today. And finally, the last one, I told you there's only a few, is that we're shifting funds. Um, when we originally planned for ADA repairs and services that we were doing this year, it totaled $60,000 in all our entire areas. And we classified them as uh, capital improvement projects. And we're realizing it just doesn't pass that accounting test. Uh, if you look at it, each one of them 
by themselves, they're less than 5,000 each. I mean, some are just, just a few dollars. Um, and they don't, and they don't uh, increase the life of that asset. So it doesn't pass that accounting test. And so instead of calling it as a 40s capital improvement cost, we're gonna call it a uh, ADA uh, service and supply expense. So again, we're moving it from one category 40s to the 20s expense category. We require uh, board approval for that. Uh, this is an ongoing project that we're gonna be doing year in, year out. And so we're gonna make it as part of just our operating budget and our service and supplies budget, not as part of a, a project budget. So that's what's going on with that. Uh, there's no change in or impact to our existing projects doing this. It's just moving funds from one area to another. Uh, the plan is still intact. So those are my budget amendments, but I do wanna bring up one thing before I finish, and that's to discuss the actual capital improvement projects. Uh, we're not making any budget amendments to it, but there have been shifts uh, due to many variables and when you work on projects you know a lot of things happen that we're, we're unprepared for and so i like to talk about that um, we had a, a pretty extensive list of projects that we plan on doing this year and uh, we started them or, or we even completed them or they're in the works and these, this is the list that's happened uh, or we've completed so we've been very busy right so it's fantastic these are projects that we plan for and that we've done or they're almost done okay and again, like I said, not all projects uh, can stay within budget. And Mather Sports Center is a good example. Uh, we went in there thinking that we're gonna paint the exterior and the interior of that project. And next thing you know, oh, let's do a flooring project so we could partner with um, Kaiser and Good Tidings and, and the Kings in the county. And then when you clean that up, well, then you, if you look up, you notice that the lighting needs a lot of help. And so we partnered with SMUD to get that accomplished. Well, we have out-of-pocket costs to do that but it needed to be done to, to do an overall project. And so that does have impact to their projects and that's what I'll get to next. But we still did it and it's fantastic. Uh, these are projects that we activated, but they're not in construction or design phase. Okay, so they're on our radar, they're on our plate, they're things that we're thinking about and they were part of the budget, but they just haven't been fully uh, started yet. Okay, and so it could be need some more community outreach or uh, waiting on a grant there's other reasons why uh, these have not quite gone to fruition yet. But they're still on our radar. And then finally, the last phase, which are delayed or deferred projects. These are the ones that are impacted based on, on those other ones happening. And it's a long list of two. So the center, we haven't activated yet because there's a lot of options that are still on the table that we're trying to figure out how we're gonna repurpose that property. And then the one project that we're putting on hold uh, due to the, the Mather Sports Complex and other enhancements is the, um, Old McDonald Farm Jackson Highway property. We were talking about raising the buildings and, and land preparing that, that piece. Of course, that can wait. Um, and so that's $71,000 that was allocated for that project that was used for those other projects to get completed. So I just wanna make sure that we're all on the same page. We're not asking for more money for this area. It's just that that's what's taking place within the projects themselves. So overall, not too shabby. Okay, so those are the three main Budget amendments that I'm asking uh, to, to have approved. I think it's our next item tonight. And uh, that's where we are on our capital improvement projects. And that's my presentation. Thank you. All right. Thank you. I don't think we have discussion, right? That's it, just presentation. Are there any questions? I have a question. Oh, yes. Okay. <laughs> I, I was a little bit concerned about the shifting of the ADA from capital improvements to services and supplies, only because you're not technically not allowed to split up a project so that it falls under that $5,000 um, requirement for calling something a capital project, right? Right, and that's what bothered me about sitting in the capital improvement projects, because it ended up being you know hundreds of these different little projects that were making up, that were calling it this asset, and it truly wasn't going to become an asset. But, to begin so you're not with. splitting a project. No, no, no. Now it's just going to be completely just a write-off expense for that for okay. this current year. Yeah, yeah. So that, that's why that I wanted my, to move it. One, you know, you, you can't really do that. It's kind of specific in the law that you can't split up a project. Right. So know. that's why we're we're taking it out of that realm of calling okay. a project. Yeah. Thank you. It's a good accounting adjustment. Any other questions? All right, I'll be back later. Don't don't go far. All right. Well, seeing no uh, public hearing on the old agenda, I guess we'll go into the regular calendar.
we do have one item on oh. E1, which is the committee report. Oh, sorry. My apologies. I missed that. I was trying to move it along, apparently. For district policies, and that is Director Lineback and Reyes. Who wants to go first? I'll go ahead and start, then Director Lineback will help me out where I may not have uh, mentioned. Uh, first and foremost, a lot of hard work has gone in here, um, and um, um, HR manager, I really want to commend you um, and your team. What we discussed was we were able to move on to the next half, uh, or probably almost even beyond the half there of our of our policy um, manual. But we discussed uh, say some items that were discussed were like safety in the workplace. Uh, there were also uh, equal employment uh, policies were discussed. Uh, how to report accidents or um, or abusive behavior, bullying, sexual, um, not sexual harassment, just harassment, because it could be any which way. Um, and I believe at this point, we are expecting to hopefully finish up in um, maybe two more committee meetings, and then we should be able to bring it to our board for approval. Yeah, I, I won't really, I don't really need to add to what you said about what we covered, um, but it was a little bit um, less than we had at the previous meeting because the previous meeting ran to five hours. So we chunked it up a little bit, or they chunked it up for us a little bit so that it would be a, a, a little easier to digest and, and follow. So it may take a couple of extra committee meetings just so that we're not, you know, pulling our hair out after three hours. <laughs> so is it, I believe, a goal was to complete it by the end of this year, before the end of this year, which is really exciting. Um, and um, it, it's looking very good. It's looking very um, easy to understand. That's real important. Okay, that's it. All right, thank you. All right. All right, well, seeing there's no public hearing, I guess we'll move on to the regular calendar. Thank you. Item G1 is to adopt resolution 18 slash 19 dash 35 to amend the fisc fiscal year 2018-19 Cordova Recreation and Park District final budgets and authorize the district administrator to file with the county auditor controller. And I'll turn it back over to Manager Goodell. All right, so uh, my presentation pretty much covered all the basis uh, in the report. It shows the breakdown of those particulars and the, and the details of the request. And uh, th that's my recommendation are those, those um, budget amendments. And I, I just want to give one quick uh, shout out to my management analyst. He was able to uh, coordinate with the county and come up with a process where we can do this in one resolution versus having to do it over five or more. And so I'm uh, very thankful for that. Yeah. All right. Does anyone have any questions? If not, we'll call for a motion. So I'll move that we adopt the resolution 18 slash 19 dash 35 to amend the fiscal year 2018-19 Cordova Recreation and Park District final budgets and authorize the district administrator to file with the county auditor controller. Thank you, motion made by Director Reyes. Do I have a second? Second. All right, seconded by Secretary Sloom. Roll call vote. Director Reyes. Aye. Director Lineback. Aye. Secretary Sloan. Aye. Vice Chair Danzel. Aye. And Chair Yearwood. Aye. Thank you. All right. Okay, next we'll move on to special proceedings for Community Facilities District Number 2018-01, Park Facilities and Services, Annexation Number 1. Item G2 is to adopt resolution 18 slash 19 dash 36, resolution of the Board of Directors of the Cordova Recreation and Park District, accepting the annexation of property located in the future annexation area to the Community Facilities District Number 
park facilities and services. And I'll turn it back over to Manager Goodell. All right, good evening, Matt Goodell, Finance Manager. So as you recall, uh, last meeting, we formed a brand new CFT district-wide that's gonna incorporate all the new growth into it eventually. And uh, at that time, we had two developments that were interested to be part of that formation process immediately. And as we move along throughout the years, we'll uh, get some other developers that wanna jump on board as well. So we have one tonight, it's Crest Lot J, and I have tonight Brian Brown, here from Francisco and Associates. He's gonna walk us through this annexation process so we have a good understanding of it and then moving forward, uh, I'll probably handle those duties. But for now, we're gonna have Brian uh, present on that. Thank well, you. Good, e good evening. Uh, as Matt had mentioned, this is the first annexation into your new CFD. And being that, we wanted to give you guys some background on what that annexation process kind of looks like as well as a little bit of background about the specific development. And as Matt mentioned, uh, the CFD was formed this past December, mm -hmm. uh, your Parks and Facilities Services CFD, and there were two projects uh, that this uh, CFD was formed around with a future annexation area that is coterminous with the uh, Cordova Recreation and Park District's boundaries. After formation, property within the future annexation area uh, may be annexed into the CFD via streamlined process. So the original CFD was like a, a two to three meeting process, or this will just be a one meeting process. Um, the process is where the property owner completes a unanimous approval form, uh, where the property owner basically approves annexing into the CFD and authorizing that basically the district levy a special tax annually on that property. Uh, the statute does not require that the streamlined process actually be approved by the board, um, but as long as the property lies in the future annexation area. But as best practice, the district will be bringing each annexation before the board as a consent item um, and have a resolution approved to ensure that there's transparency and that there's a pub public record of the uh, actual annexation process. Uh, this will result in only one board meeting instead of the standard three to complete the process. So as for the specific development, uh, you may recall that originally during the formation of CFD 2018-1, there were three development projects. And we only formed the uh, CFD around two because one of the uh, projects had decided to kind of pull out and wait a little bit till they were a little further along in the process. Uh, Crestley uh, Sunridge Development is actually that specific project that did pull out. So they're coming back uh, because they're a little bit further along, they're ready to move forward. Uh, that project's just south of Douglas Road and east of the Monolane Development. Development's projected to construct 369 single family detached residential units and build out. Uh, this development's conditioned to mitigate the fiscal impacts of their projects and this condition will be satisfied by their annexing into the CFD. The maximum rate for single family home will be $403 um, a year and can increase annually based on the greater of the consumer price index for all urban consumers or 3% and the tax can be levied as long as needed as long as the district continues to provide services. Um, at build out this development is estimated to uh, generate approximately $149,000 uh, for the district and that concludes our presentation for the evening, but district staff and I are available to answer any questions you may have related to this item or the annexation process. All right, thank you. Does anyone have any questions? Okay, my question is about um, sort of the technicality of a vote. So is this signed unanimous approval equivalent to a vote? Because don't you have to have a vote to tax? So, so if, yes. Um, so basically the property owner, so if we were to have a vote for this, uh, we'd send a ballot to this one property owner. Right. So basically in turn, they're signing this unanimous approval form um, instead of having an actual ballot in an election. It, it's, it's just seems to me, it, I mean, I'm glad you're gonna bring it to the board in terms of uh, transparency because I feel like it should be a very public process when you're, um, you know, a, approving a taxing you know, additionally taxing properties, which is basically what this is. Absolutely, and just because the statute doesn't require it mm -hmm. be, come before the board or have a legislative approval, doesn't mean that it's not best practice. With mm -hmm. every agency that we work with, um, we always suggest that they bring it before, at least through a consent item. Yeah. Um, and that way, at least there's also public record of it as well. Besides just the transparency factor, I mean, it's, it's just a best practice and I, I think should you ever need to go back in time, you'll, it'll always be clear as mm -hmm. to what happened, what property was subject, and so forth. 
and that it fully complied with these requirements under the LaRue statute. Yeah, yes. right. Yeah. Thank you. Um, and I think it's, are you say it's because there's only one property owner at this time? Correct. Am I right? Correct. That is why the vote is one. And that right, they were, in unanimous, yeah. In and that, that they respect. lie within the future annexation area. Yeah. Yes. Um, the other question I had was um, when we formed this CFD, um, obviously what I understand is any other developments in, um, can join the CFD, can be, uh, can request to be part of the CFD, but you said something about annexation area. So have we, what we call, defined an annexation area so that any development in that area will be able to uh, request to, to be part of this CFD? So the CFD was formed around the two specific developments and the future right. annexation area was set up around the district's boundaries. Okay. Um, the only exceptions were uh, CFDs that were already um, created. So okay. um, your developments like Montalena, uh, the Glenboro, I think things of that nature. So in other words, basically what's going to happen is we won't have LLCs and all this would probably just be having CFDs. Yeah, that's the great okay. part about this process. So we were going to have um, one after another all these CFDs. And, we're, and the way I was looking at it, we're going to end up with 30 CFDs to manage. And it made more sense. And it's a very popular uh, choice to just have the overlay being the entire district and every new development okay. neighborhood be part of that. And so we'll just keep the money within those funds that join and just manage those parks that way with one fund. Thank you. All right, any other questions? All right, well, I'll call for the motion. Anyone would like to make a motion? Make the motion. I move the board of directors adopt resolution 18 slash 19 dash 36. Resolution of the Board of Directors of the Cordova Recreation and Park District accepting the annexation of property located in the future annexation area to the Community Facilities District number 2018-01, Park Facility and Services. All right, thank you. I have a motion by Secretary Sloan. A second? Second. Seconded by Vice Chair Danzel. Roll call vote. Director Reyes? Aye. Director Lineback? Aye. Secretary Sloan? Aye. Vice Chair Danzel? Aye. And Chair Yearwood? Aye. All right. Thank you. Okay, you're Thank you, Brian. All right. G3? Item G3 is to authorize the district administrator to execute a grant contract with the Sacramento Housing and Redevelopment Authority in the amount of $202,780 for the construction of Rosemont Community Park improvements. And I'll turn it over to Park Planner Christina James. Good evening, Chair Yearwood and members of the board. Tonight we're bringing before you a grant contract with Sacramento Redevelopment Housing Authority in the amount of $202,780 for improvements at Rosemont Community Park. In November 2017, the board approved a design grant contract with the same agency for a design grant for improvements at Rosemont Community Park. An RFQ process was followed and Calendar Associates was selected as the landscape architecture firm to predict, prepare those construction documents. Um, over the past year, those were prepared and also the district applied for construction funds for those improvements and we, um, we were successful. This grant tonight would fund those the base bid of those improvements, including all new concrete walkways um, where there are currently asphalt walkways in the park. The adult for that would be improvements to the, um, to the main T-ball field in that park site. Um, so if the board approves the grant contract tonight, um, that contract will be circulated and then um, we'll be bringing before your board at a future meeting, likely in March, um, asking for um, authorization to um, notice um, to contractors notice inviting bids, um, and then the project would um, move forward and a, um, the lowest responsible contractor would be brought before your board at a subsequent meeting for approval. I'm here for any questions. All right, thank you. Did anyone have any questions? 
Uh, so the the um, the project, the construction, and and um, the improvements. Are we expecting to have that done this year, 2019? By yeah. the end of 2019? Yes, they they should Thank be you. done. Um, you know, providing bids come in at our uh, you know within our budget, and we find a, a responsible, responsive contractor. Um, we're looking at a time frame of before the fiscal year. This project should be complete the end of the fiscal year, so June. So June, 2019, mm -hmm. that end, okay. Thank you. All right, thank you. Anyone else? Okay, cool. No? All right, uh, I'd like to call for a motion. I move the Board of Directors authorize the District Administrator to execute a grant contract with the Sacramento Housing and Redevelopment Authority in the amount of $202,780 for the construction of Rosemont Community Park improvements. Thank you, motion made by Director Leinbach. Second. Second. Seconded by Director Reyes. All right, roll call vote. Director Reyes? Aye. Director Leinbach? Aye. Secretary Sloan? Aye. Vice Chair Danzel? Aye. <clears throat> And Chair Yearwood. Aye. All right, we'll move on to item H, Board of Directors items. Thank you, Chair Yearwood. Item H1 is board member reports. Item A for training, there was none over the past period. So item H1B is board member activities and meetings report. All right, thank you. <clears throat> All right, uh, Director Reyes, we'll start with you. Sure, sure. Thank you. I have two items I wanted to uh, simply uh, acknowledge. The, the uh, King's Court ribbon cutting staff, that was awesome. It was really, really good. Uh, the energy in the room, you know, seeing everyone there, the kids. I mean, there were kids that enjoy the court and there were adult kids that remembered it and were so excited to see it, and I, I really think the partnership just was uh, awesome. I think uh, I'm looking forward to hopefully more partnerships in that sense where we can serve the community by bringing uh, resources together. The other, the other uh, item I had on my list was that I did want to say that I did we receive the uh, Cordova Rec and Park District Spring Recreation Guide. And just want to say, it just gets better and better and better and easier, and I, I really enjoyed it very much. That's it. All right. No items for you? Uh, not really, but I did want to report, I don't know if I'm supposed to, that I completed the Form 700 Conflict of Interest form. When did that do? <laughs> when did you? April 1st. Something like that, right? Yeah. yeah. Yes. So, yeah. All right, uh, Secretary Sloan. Okay, I um, I was able to attend the uh, Rancho Cordova Chamber of Commerce Business Outlook and Economic Forecast uh, breakfast on the uh, January 31st. It was also a, uh, an opportunity for the chamber to honor uh, Kurt Haven, the uh, first employee ever hired by the city of Rancho Cordova. And um, it, was a, it, was, it was an interesting event because there was a lot of uh, people out there that were um, um, part of the community and it was nice that we were able to have some from the park district also be there. Um, and the next thing I was at the King's Court ribbon cutting, what Director uh, Reyes said was the power of partnerships and what, what we can do with a, a to make a, um, a, a, a village of, of different tribes and create uh, facilities and, and enhance the district. Uh, it was like a, a wonderful, wonderful event. And I just, mm -hmm. um, I, I, I saw all those kids and the smiles on their faces and I realized the history of that, of that gymnasium and what we've done to it and given it a whole new fresh outlook and, and Think about all the future generations are going to be playing on that uh, that court. Now we just have to keep the kings in Sacramento, right? 
I think they'll be here for a while. Good. I don't <laughs> think they're going anywhere. All right. Exactly. All right. Uh, Vice Chairman. Um, <clears throat> I have one thing that's on here, one thing that's not. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. Uh, King's Court ribbon cutting, um, you know, growing, growing up here in Rancho and playing basketball on that court over my lifetime and then seeing how incredible it looks now that it's been resurfaced. Um, it does look nice with the King's logo on it. Um, being that it is the first indoor court that they've done, um, they're not going to, in my opinion, they're not going to have to spend a lot of money to do like they are in some of the outdoor courts where they're constantly every year having to go and re-update them because they they just get beat, beat by the weather so badly. Um, the other thing is, as the board knows, I applied for the open vacancy position on the Capri, and I was not selected. Um, they made their decision on the 13th. They contacted me on the 15th to let me know that I was not selected. They have not said who that was in the email I received. They did not say who that who they had selected, but that they had selected one of the five candidates, and it was not me. So. Should we demand a recount? Sorry. All right. Um, I, uh, as well, uh, attended the ribbon cut for the King's Court. Uh, again, it was a great event. I'm amazed that that was a refurbishing of the original floor. You would think we put a whole brand new floor in there. Um, good tidings did a fabulous job, and it was a, a great to see a, a new partnership with these different uh, agencies and things like that. So I, too, am looking forward to future projects, uh, different things, and amazing what a little bit of lighting will do and some paint will do for a place. So, And, of course, a nice brand-new uh, court. So uh, kudos to everybody on that one. And uh, that is all I have, so I guess we will... What do we got left here? H2, which there is nothing going on in that area. So I guess we're moving on to I. Thank you. Item I1 is the district-wide monthly progress report for February, and I'll turn it over to Administrator Larkin. Thank you, Clerk Jones. Just some updates uh, and highlights from our report. Um, PRMID Oversight Committee openings. Two members' terms are set to expire this June and the district will soon be advertising for open application period. According to recent amendments to the operating guidelines, incumbents must reapply for their positions by submitting a statement of interest. Uh, these statements will be considered along with any new applications, and the PRMID Oversight Nominating Standing Committee, Chair Yearwood and Vice Chair Danzel, will review the applications and make recommendations to the full board for appointments. Uh, the open seats right now are Zone A, Rancho Cordova, one seat, and Zone C, Gold River. Uh, we have a couple of just highlights from programming and recreation. On January 15th, uh, the NRPA awarded a grant to CRPD that allows for three staff members to attend an eight-hour course training for Walk With Ease program. The six-week program is designed to help relieve arthritis pain but is suitable for anyone looking to add physical activity into their regular routine. So Heather applied for that opportunity and we were awarded that. So kudos to Heather. Uh, also, uh, the Neil Orchard Activity Center, our senior activity center was awarded with a certificate from the National Society of the Sons of the American Revolution in recognition of exemplary patriotism in the display of the flag of the United States of America. Thank you to Greg and Rel for their dedication to taking such good care of our flag out at the Senior Center. Uh, Cordova Community Pool Replacement Design. The district is planning staff, district planning staff coordinated with LPA Sacramento Metro, Sacramento Metro Fire, that's a tongue twister, uh, City of Rancho Cordova Public Works and Community Development Departments to follow up on comments received in December of 2018 on the minor design review, uh, the conditional use permit applications, comments reviewed will be addressed in the resubmittal on February 8th, and both of those documents will be presented to the City Council on March 4th at the regular City Council meeting. Uh, LPA provided a 50% design uh, progress set. So that's an invitation for a March 4th uh, City Council meeting that is still planned for us to do uh, the next phase of our presentation on the design for our pool. 
Uh, also, just some updates on some projects, Riviera East walkway improvements. A pre-construction meeting was held. Work will begin once acceptable weather and soil conditions exist. We have a lot of water going on out there. And so we're getting a couple of delays due to that, but we are still planned on making sure that that happens um, when we're able to do that. Also, the Rosemont dugout replacement, the permit from Sacramento County has been secured. CRPD's construction inspector, John Biondo, is working closely with the Rosemont Little League and Crusader Fence to sequence the work of both parties. The wet weather is presenting some delay. Little League grand opening day um, has been postponed slightly until the backstop has been installed. And with that, the Rosemont Little League opening day is scheduled for Saturday, March 16th. Um, at Rosemont Community Park. There's a parade that goes along with it um, that starts at 8 a.m. and then field ceremonies start at 9, 9 a.m. There are um, listed activities on the Board of Directors special event invitation page and that concludes my report. All right, does anyone have any questions? Director Reyes? Um, I have one comment or question, need more clarification. Um, and that's to map regarding the financial report notes where there was an expense liability that was showing up and then it was overstated. Who found, uh, who caught this amount here? 420, 72, 425 is going to be credited. Okay, yeah, so tell um, us. Tell right, me. it was tell caught us. last year, but it took until last month for the county to make that adjustment. They wanted to make sure what the amount was. So what happened is that they contracted with a third-party payroll company to do their payroll, and so we were just expensing our group insurance to the expense account, and we continued that process. But when the county took the, the payroll in-house, they started um, also posting to that expense account our, our complete employer and employee um, group insurance expense. So it was doubling up in that account. And so we didn't change our process and how we were processing our claims at the end of 2018. And once we started seeing like, wait a minute, this seems inflated and, uh, and cash always reconciled because it only hit cash mm -hmm. once. So that's why it wasn't caught in the cash level. But once we started looking at our reports, like why is group insurance so high? We realized that the county was also putting that amount into our financials as well. And they're also putting it into our liability account. So it was liability and expense that was both that. So they had to take that and just bring them both down. And so that adjustment was made uh, this fiscal year. But since it's part of the reporting, mm -hmm. it's, um, we get that credit for this year. It was able to be part of, um, in time, to be part of last year's audit as well. So we're able to get that, that adjusted so it's, it matches where it's supposed to. Okay. Yeah. All right. Thank you. Yeah, it's just an accounting. Oh, who was clarity. who was the one that noticed it? I mean, that was able to discover. Right. No, well, I know that the group said, insurance was getting too high. Here? Yeah, and so it was near the end of last year. And at that time, I was kind of a one man show. I didn't have an analyst, yeah. and so <laughs> it, uh, you know, cash was reconciling. But looking at the report, finally, I was like, wait a minute, group insurance near the end of the year doesn't look right. And so, good. Yeah. All right. Thank you. All right. Any other question comments? Clarifications needed. All right. So it looks like uh, we will move on to information items. Item J. Thank you. Item J1 is the article's correspondence and public outreach. We have one article, two invitation designs for the King's Court event, one media advisory for the King's Court event, and two newsletters. All right. We're all good on that. All right. We'll move to K, future agenda items meetings and events calendar. Thank you. Item K1 for the regular board meeting of March 20th, 2019. So far planned on the agenda, we have a presentation regarding the before and after the Mather Sports Center improvements. And then we're also going to do our annual item where we direct the preparation of the engineer's reports for our CFDs and LLDs. And then for the calendar, we have there for your review the March and February events. All right, you're all good? All right, well, I guess, uh, well, hey, looks like we'll move to uh, item L. Is there any other business uh, we have? All right, nope, we'll so adjourn to know. our uh, regular, next regular meeting on March 20th, 2019. We are adjourned at 714. Thank you. All right. No close.